The real estate market has done everything that analysts and economists predicted that it would not as it has outperformed predictions dramatically. In this video, I'm going to share with you what you need to know about the greater Vancouver real estate market. And at the end, I got to stay till the end because I'm going to share with you some really definitive infographics that help to explain why we are where we are in our current market and where it looks like they're going to continue to go in the coming months. And I'm also going to share with you the best, absolute best investment that you can make in the greater Vancouver real estate market. My name is Jonathan Leonard with the Vancouver Life Real Estate Group and eXp Realty. And I bring videos to you each and every single week, whether it is talking about current stats and updates about the real estate market or taking you around the cities of Vancouver and Richmond to show you what it is truly like to be able to live, love, laugh, work, and play here. So if you have any interest in learning more about the cities of Vancouver and Richmond specifically, or being updated on regular current market updates in the real estate market, then make sure to go right down below this video and click that subscribe subscribe button and right after you do that click that bell and then you'll get notified as these new videos come out so you can be the first to know what is happening in the greater real estate market here in the Vancouver area. So what happened in the real estate market in the month of June? Well, everyone is going to say that prices went up because the home price index went up. But this is a lagging indicator and it's super, super important to know this because it is behind what is actually happening on the ground. So if your agent is telling you that all the home prices are going upward trend still, well, that has actually changed despite the home price index and it has gone up. So home price index has said that prices have gone up and prices have gone up about 8% since the beginning of the year. And this is where I'm saying expectations have been blown out of the water because people thought that maybe it would go up a percent and a half, 2% in terms of home prices over the course of this entire year. And obviously that has changed dramatically. And the biggest thing that is few in this, which you've heard me talk about before, and I'm sure you've heard other people talk about, is a lack of inventory out in the market right now, is we just have so little inventory now. Having said that, it is starting to pick up, but it is nowhere near what we need it to be to be able to have prices start to level off a little bit more. So having said that, this is the side that most agents and, and that are not going to share. Home price index went up, yes, but the median and average prices, which is boots on the ground, this is exactly what happened in a particular time period. The median and average prices both went down for the first time in six and five months respectively. So here's the details. The median sales price dropped by nearly $23,000. And it's the first drop that we've seen in six months for that number. Average sales price dropped by over $41,000. And now this is all product types, single family detached, townhouses and condos combined. And for the average sales price, that's the first drop that we've seen in five months. So the HPI is shown as having increased. And again, that's a lagging indicator versus what's actually happening. The median and sales average prices have dropped quite a big number. This is something that you really need to know if you are thinking about selling or you have that in the back of your mind, sooner than later it might be a potential option. The markets typically slow down in the summer, so you might benefit from a little bit more competition, a little bit more buyers coming back into the market in the fall. But we also have an interest rate announcement coming next week, which will influence a in a big way what's going to happen next. So now my thoughts are that that interest rate announcement is my hopeful thoughts are is that they're going to hold rates and when they did the last announcement of a quarter point it seemed very strong that they were going to increase another quarter point however having said that at the last inflation announcement that they did inflation dropped by a full percentage point and so that is a massive massive win with inflation coming down to 3.4 percent i believe it was uh and 3.7 for core inflation and so the Bank of Canada earlier this year uh, in the spring said, hey, we're going to be um, in the 3% range, uh, under 3% range by the time we hit the summer. And so that might actually be the case when they do their next announcement later this month. Uh, but for the fact that we went down a full percentage point at the last reading, I think that is a big, big win. And likely, again, fingers crossed, that the bank decides not to overcorrect and increase rates again, but actually hold. And if that happens, I think what we're going to see in the market is a tapering of, of sales and a tapering of prices, not by much, um, because there's still a lot of demand with little inventory. So it's not going to be a big dip, but I think there will be a slower continued decrease in terms of prices. And then we'll see what happens uh, in terms of listings and that they come to market in the fall. All right, let's dive into the infographics that I said were going to be very important for you to see to be able to understand why it is where we are, but also what the current sentiment is in the market and where it looks like we're going to go in the coming months. 
All right, let's dive into the first one. And this is one that a lot of people anticipated was gonna be a big thing, and that is mortgage arrears, which essentially means the first step in terms of foreclosures. And we are far away from that. So let's take a look at this image right here. As you can tell from this, we are on a very much downward trend in terms of mortgage arrears, and we have been for the last 30 years, basically. Now, you can see a very small uptick on the right bottom right-hand corner of that graph, but this is all, you know, despite these rising interest rates and the high cost of living, the share mortgages in arrears are at, remains at all-time lows of just 0.15%. What that means is that we're not gonna be having a big slew of foreclosures coming to the market at any time. And the provinces with the lowest uh, mortgage arrears in place is actually BC and Ontario. So uh, our markets, Vancouver and Toronto with the highest prices in terms of homes have the lowest mortgage arrear rates. And our team at the Vancouver Life also just sold a home in foreclosure and they were in mortgage arrears for over two years before it finally came to market. So in terms of a big amount of homes that are going to come to market that are in foreclosure, we're far away from that because these homes can be in arrears for a number of many, many months, uh, and they're not considered uh, delinquent until they're at least six months behind. So uh, each bank has their own different versions of that, but basically minimum of six months uh, behind on payments. And so again, we're a long ways away from this and we won't be seeing a whole bunch of foreclosures for at least probably another year's time. Uh, and even then, I don't see banks, because banks don't want homes to go in for foreclosure. They don't want to go through the process of taking ownership of the home and selling it and doing all of that and dealing with uh, sellers who try to not let the bank take over because this is their home. And so that's the last thing they want to do. So we're going to see the bank trying to bring in some other ways of being able to help people with their financing. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see and, and time will tell. Let's jump on to the next infographic. There's an upbeat real estate outlook meaning that Canadians, as it says here, are now feeling more optimistic regarding the prospects for real estate as an, an investment. The real estate outlook index has surged nearly 30 points off of the February lows, but what I really want you to pay attention to is where we are right now and what the average has been. Now, obviously you see the biggest valley there right after 2020, that is during the time of COVID when the entire world was shut down and nobody knew who, what, when, where was gonna happen. And then obviously we jumped right back up to basically peak levels. Now, obviously at the end of 2022, early this year, we plummeted quite a lot because of where interest rates were going. They were going on a steep, steep upward trend. And so consumer confidence in the market was dropping drastically because nobody knew what their uh, rates and, and payments were gonna be like on mortgages. So in terms of the confidence in the market, that slowed down. There was more of a negative outlook on the real estate market, but that has, again, changed dramatically. Now we're up where we are now. I see the far right of this graph. We're at about average um, sentiment and outlook of, you know, about that 40% mark, which is about pretty average, which you can see for the about six years prior to 2020. And so that puts us at pre-COVID levels and at a state where we've basically always been for the most part. And so that's something to really take note in terms of the real estate market and where we are right now. Adding onto that, we have this graph here where home sales continue to rise. And it was actually five months in a row since January, home sales in terms of volume have been on the rise. And just in the past from March, April, May, there was a 22% increase in terms of home sales. Now, June data has come in and that has changed slightly. And it's a 21% increase from June of last year, what our sales were last month, but we're still 8.6% below the 10 year average. And we actually saw a small decrease of approximately 300 less sales in June compared to May. So there has been a little bit of a tipping point where we started to come back down in the number of sales uh, compared to May. All of this has occurred with this next graph, which is the steepest rate hike cycle that we've ever seen in over 30 years. As you can tell, take a look at these different line items. The, the red line is what we just experienced over the last year. And it's the steepest and the fastest that rates have been ever increased in such a short period of time. And so this is just something that to be aware of, of all these things in terms of consumer confidence has still gone up over the last several months. Home sales have been up over the last several months, despite this steep, steep increase in terms of our interest rates. And a big part of this and where all these things are leaning towards is a lack of inventory. That is the biggest, biggest thing. And we have a large number of, of people, of buyers out in the market. So there's high demand and we still have this state of low inventory. And with the current goals, like we don't have enough homes to be able to house the current population that we have. And now the government has these record uh 
levels of immigration that we're trying to reach. And so they're bringing in a record number of people that we've never had before, which is putting a greater crunch on supply. And this brings me to the next aspect, which is the absolute best investment that you could possibly make, especially in the city of Vancouver in terms of real estate, if you have the financial ability to do so. And let's show you what that is. Long term supply crunch. High interest rates curb demand, but the number of single family homes for sale remain in near decade lows in most metropolitans across the country. But this is the biggest thing. Housing starts are now in decline. So this is going to create a further supply crunch. And here's the other thing too. In the city of Vancouver, or it was earlier this, this year or last year, last year it was, um, they created their official community plan of where they want the city to go over the next 30 years. And the number of housing starts for each of the different product types, single family homes are only gonna be 6% of the total homes built. And so this is exactly where your absolute best real estate investment could possibly be, especially in the city of Vancouver, is any single family home lot that you can get your hands on. And a big, big part of this is they have proposed the Plex plan now where the entire city of Vancouver, other than downtown, is going to get rid of the single family zoning. And what that will do will mean that on virtually any lot in Vancouver that is a single family home, you could build a fourplex on and depending on the size of the lot, you could go up to building a sixplex, meaning basically a, a large house with essentially four to six units within it that could be all sold separately. And so you'd essentially have your own strata within that house. And this is, it's going to dramatically increase the potential value of that plot of land because now you can build a bigger home on it uh, that could be composed of four to six units on it that could all be sold separately. So now that value of the land is much greater. And so if you have the ability to be able to jump into a single family detached home or buying a lot of some kind within the city of Vancouver, that by far is going to be the scarcest real estate that you can basically get in the metropolitan area of the greater Vancouver and almost guarantee a strong appreciation over the coming years. And so if that's a possibility, if that's something that you're thinking about, or if you're actually thinking about selling your single family detached home, Think about it. Is there a way you might be able to hold on to it and maintain some of the equity or use the equity from it to be able to downsize if that's something that you're wanting to downsize from a big home into a townhouse or a condo? Is there a way to be able to just use some equity where you can buy into the townhouse or a condo and keep that because the appreciation and value of that is very likely going to be much stronger. Now, every person's situation is different. And so if you have questions about that, please reach out. Our team and I have been helping numerous people over the years and would love to be able to have a chat and just see how we can best guide you and what makes the most sense for you given your circumstances and the situation and the current market that we're in as well. We are our team at the Vancouver Life. We get calls, we get texts, we get emails from people every day that are having situations change and they're thinking about what their options are, whether they're going to be moving to Vancouver, out of Vancouver, whether they're going to be selling, whether they're going to be buying and we are happy to help and we love responding to those messages. So if you have questions, please reach out Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or go right down below this video and click that link to be able to book a Zoom call with us. And we'd love to be able to have a chat with you and learn a little bit more about your situation and uh, give our advice and, and as much value as we can to you. Have an amazing day and look forward to seeing you on the next video.